Hello one and all, today I wanted to do a book review of this book which is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. I read this in a day recently and I haven't read a book in a day in a very long time so I was pretty excited about that and I just wanted to talk to you about it if you haven't heard of this book. It was released in I think June last year and it just went straight onto the best selling charts and it did very very well. It was just behind Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, a lot of the time and you could find it on the shelves beside Fifty Shades of Grey. I wasn't inspired to pick it up and read it until a couple of real life people recommended it which is always exciting and I actually bought my copy in Asda which it sort of says something about um, books that get as popular as this. You're not really supposed to buy books in supermarkets. Asda is a big supermarket chain in the UK. Um, for lots of reasons but mainly because they sort of get to choose what becomes popular fiction and that doesn't necessarily mean it's good fiction if that makes sense. So I was pretty wary of this book in the same way that I'd be pretty wary of Fifty Shades of Grey's literary value. But all that aside, this is a thriller, a suspense novel, a crime novel, whatever you want to call it. I don't read that many thrillers. But I was pretty drawn to this, firstly because it's cover. I love the fluorescent orange. It has it on both sides in the inside cover. And I think this is the UK cover. I think the American one's a little bit different. It has so many reviews. The one on the front says Thriller of the Year. That's from The Observer. Um, it has loads of broadsheet paper reviews. And then publications like... L magazine and Good Housekeeping magazine, which would make you think it's kind of aimed at women, but I don't think it is, and I think they've tried pretty hard to make it appeal to everybody in terms of its cover. I will say that this book is for adults, and there is a lot of bad language and adult themes throughout, so there is my warning. I haven't read any of Gillian Flynn's other books, so I didn't really know what to expect in terms of style. The story is in fact not about a gone girl but a gone woman. The story is about Nick and Amy who are husband and wife and Amy goes missing and she is not a girl, she is most definitely a woman but alliteration sells, you know? So Nick and Amy take it in turns to narrate. Um, his is in the present and it's following the sort of case of her disappearance. Hers are through diary entries from the past, from when they first met to up until the point where she disappears and I just I found this really easy to read because I've been reading so many just really wordy novels for university um, as the semester has been finishing and I'm just gonna show you a page from this book it just has it has a list it has loads of italics it has dialogue it has so much going on it was so easy to read I think the characters are definitely realistic, somewhat relatable. Um, I found myself thinking of people I knew when I was reading about the two of them. Um, I think maybe the story is a bit far-fetched and the biggest selling point for this book, I think, is there is a massive plot twist and I wanted to be ahead of the book and I was reading it and I was trying to figure out what was going to happen and I was feeling really confident and I thought I had it. And when it got to the point where it just twists the whole story around, I just, I was flabbergasted. My, my flabber was gasted. And it's one of these sort of psychological thrillers that after I finished it, I found myself feeling really weird and thinking about myself and how I sort of present myself. Um, I really don't want to give too much away about the story, but if I can say, think of one day gone drastically drastically wrong and that's what this book is and i probably shouldn't say this because i'm going to ruin the reading experience for anybody who's going to read this book after me saying this but i'm just going to go for it my fellow wonderling and youtuber lena who's also known as the overly attached girlfriend if you keep a mental picture of her and her videos <laughs> whilst reading this book it makes the experience so, so much better. I shouldn't have said that. I'll probably edit that out. People have accused Gillian Flynn of being a misogynist because of her portrayal of her female main character, which I thought was a bit strange. I mean, the gender politics in this novel are certainly interesting, but I think it's all very 
self-conscious and it's all very deliberate on the part of Gillian Flynn but it's something worth reading about she's responded to it in interviews so if you're interested in that it would be worth reading and also if you have read this and you found Amy's character particularly interesting I'm not going to spoil the book I will say to check out Judith Butler's on gender, I think on gender is the name of the book, or just search for performative gender. She has this sort of theory about how we perform our genders and it's just really interesting and something to sort of go hand in hand with this book that's non-fiction, which is nice. Overall, I was very impressed with this book. I can see why it has such a widespread appeal and why it has sold so many copies and if you are to read it I would ask around and friends and family and see if someone has a copy of the book because they're bound to and you can save yourself some money which would be fun. I hope you're all very well. I'm currently reading The Red House by Mark Haddon and the book I read before this one was The Life of Pi actually which I did not enjoy nearly as much as the movie. I was quite disappointed but that's a story for another day. Perhaps I will see you all very soon. I have a couple of videos to film in coming weeks. If you've read Gone Girl please let me know what you thought without spoiling it for anyone who hasn't and I am going to go make some coffee.